What is up, everybody? Super cold out here. You live out in Boise, Idaho. Uh, we don't get winter until like sometime in January, it seems. <laughs> we had such a mild year this year, and man, it just came in and uh, made it real, real cold. So I'm gonna be out here uh, doing my walk and talking with you guys a little bit, but gotta stay bundled up, it's real cold. So today, I wanna ask you a question before I start giving you any kind of information. What are your motivations for progress and not perfection? right? So this is a big question with multiple parts. First of all, like what motivates you? That's kind of the basics. Like what are you excited to get out of bed every day and do? Now, if, if you don't have a single thing on your list, Kendra, good to see you. If you do not have one thing on your list that you are excited to wake up every day enough that when somebody asks you what you're excited about in the world, that you could just be like, oh, this, like, first of all, you need to focus on that. Hey, you got, you got kids that motivate you. That's awesome. Julie, good to see you. So the question is what motivates you to get out of bed every day, first of all? Like we all have things that we have to get done and that we struggle through and we tolerate and, and sacrifice for to make sure that, you know, we have a certain life. But what are you excited to do that gets you up out of bed and grateful for the world that you live in and anticipating being able to do that thing. Okay, so, so let's get this very specific in your head because this is where it starts. The second part of this question is, what motivates you to make progress instead of perfection being the goal? And that's a different question because the first part is just what am I excited about experiencing? Well, that's cool, but if you are excited about painting, for example, and you paint the same picture every single day and you never try anything new to add to the painting. Maybe you're real good at the, the, the scene that has the mountain and the clouds and the house and the stream and that's all you ever do. At some point, you start to lose motivation because you're not moving in any direction. It's kind of just stagnant. Yeah, you're excited to do the painting because that's something you got nailed down. But if you don't step out of the box to once in a while try throwing a bird in there or change up the color of the clouds or whatever, whatever the name of progress is that allows you to get to a better place with your painting. That's the key, okay? Progress, not perfection. And this is why people avoid progress because they think that there has to be a perfect way and that's impossible. Hey, Colton, we got Mac. Good to see you guys. So the motivations that get you to make progress are the things that come internally, the things that you are inspired to do because of the act of doing it. Perfection is something we create as an ideal in our own heads based on how we feel other people will perceive it. Okay, so if you're looking for the method that makes it perfect, you will never find it. There is no perfection in the world. There's flaw in everything, and we have to have the yin and yang, we have to have the bad to appreciate the good, right? So searching for perfection is futile efforts. We have to look in a method of how can I be better tomorrow than I was today, right? And that's very important because when we talk about kids being a motivation, mine are huge for me. My kids are fairly intelligent and I'm not saying that on a like bragging level. Um, there's test scores that prove that stuff in school. And, and you know, my kids don't really have a lot of questions on their homework and you know, I can usually tell them a concept and they get it and that kind of stuff. So like, I feel very blessed with intelligent children and that's awesome for me because they show me how things are looking from their end, right? You get to see the world through a child's eye, but you don't always understand their view because they don't have the communication to be able to explain it. But my kids have that ability. They love to share with me the situations that they're in, what's going on and ask for advice and all of those sorts of things that 
bring me back to understanding things on a different level so I can explain it to them in simpler terms. When I talk to you guys as adults, I can use big words like perpetuation and whatever I come up with. But like when I talk to my kids, I have to get better at explaining things to them in the simple terms so that not only can they feel better about the situation that we're talking about or, you know, understand how to deal with something next time, but also just in a way that doesn't overwhelm them. And that's very important is in their sake, I know that if I don't explain it in simple terms, first of all, I'm not helping them, but secondly, they're going to run over that same problem again because I didn't do my job to get better in the explanation. Okay. So, so my kids in that sense, teach me how to improve myself. And, and that word improvement, I will never be perfect. I will never have the exact words that they need. I will never understand everything that they're going through. It just isn't possible. There is no perfection, especially in parenthood. But there's always progress that can be made. I don't care how good your world's going, how much connection you have with your kids. You can always improve as a parent by learning from each interaction that you have with them how to get better at the communication. You know, and guys, I got to tell you, if you're trying to make progress in just about any way, get better at communicating because most of the time things are either not done or misunderstood or whatever because of a lack of understanding on someone's efforts. Okay. So if my kids tell me one thing and I take it a certain way and I come back at them with like, Oh, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm upset because of the way I interpreted it. There's two sides of that communication that goes on their, their version that's put out and my version that I take in. And so I have to get better at hearing the words that they say and understanding where they're going with that in order for me to be able to become a better communicator with them to help them with the thing that they're actually telling me about. So in your own sake, as a parent, especially make sure that you're always looking to make progress in your own abilities to interact with your children. But then you take that, that same mentality out into what your, your own motivations are in the world, the things that get you out of bed and make you excited to interact with the world, that progress mindset of just trying to improve a little bit on my ability from where I'm at now, the end point isn't the actual result you're looking for. The joy that you get from the thing that makes you excited is the interaction that you have in the moment. It's not about getting to that perfect painting because when you get good at the one thing with the scene that you already nailed down 40 times and then you mess up, you do something that doesn't work out the way that you planned and you try that bird and oh, I just did not make this look the way I had it pictured in my head. That interaction that you have with yourself and your ability to talk to yourself, again, it's down to communication. The way you talk to yourself is just as important as the way you talk to other people. So when you mess up and you draw that, you paint that bird incorrectly compared to the vision you had in your head, that's one time that you were able to say, this is not how I want it. Okay. And this is why we have to have the negative in order to appreciate the positive, because if there are things that happen in your world that don't match the outcome that you thought was going to happen, that shows you the way that you don't want things to go, which is just as important in order to understand where you do want them to go and to know the steps not to take in order to go in the other direction. Okay. So we got a couple people on here. I appreciate you guys. If you're watching this, uh, give me a hashtag live down in the uh, comments below. If you're watching the replay on this, uh, hashtag replay. So I know who's watching with me, who's uh, checking this out later. But we're talking about the motivations that drive you towards progress versus perfection and avoiding the ideal that we create in our own head that things will ever be perfect because they just won't. It doesn't work that way. Hink B. Look at this guy. He ran. Haven't seen this guy in a minute. So good to see you, man. I'm out here freezing, talking to everybody about uh, motivations in the world. So it's a good deal. 
But my kids allow me to look at things from a different perspective and make progress in myself. Uh, Juanita Haggerty, good, good to see you. Very nice. So one of my kids is uh, 15. He's in high school. Makes me feel a little bit old. <laughs> but he's extremely intelligent and always has been a very, very intelligent kid and looks at things uh, almost too analytically sometimes. It comes to me with these situations where he just doesn't get it. <laughs> you know? Especially if you remember being in high school and how things went, um, everything is superficial. Everything is so surface level. And how do I impress everyone else? Like there's no sense of self. It's all about what am I gonna do to get other people to recognize and approve of me? So this process that we're talking about of making progress in yourself like is non-existent in that scenario because everything is the external motivation. There's no internal, here's what I'm about. Nobody understands that in high school and nobody's ever told to look at it like that. But I've told my son this from a young age. And so now he's in this situation where he's dealt with the discomfort every single day of, I don't relate to these people. Yolanda, good to see you. And when you're forced to be in a situation where you can't relate to the mentality and the thought process and the decision making that, that goes on, it's very difficult to see yourself as not being wrong. Okay, and this is where most people fail in achieving the things that they want to do that help them move forward in the world is because the validation continues to come from outside. And if you don't have anyone in your corner telling you that, yes, the way that you're going is correct, or it is what is best for you more than being right, you know, if you, if you absolutely love to do skydiving and you are an adrenaline junkie and you just jump out of airplanes every single chance you can because that is the thing that makes you feel the most alive but you work in a place that is about safety and about things that are very low-key and like mellow or whatever those people are not going to agree with your choice to skydive at every opportunity and that's going to be a really frustrating place for you to have to interact with every single day. And as adults, we get the magic of choice. We get to choose the people that we interact with on a regular basis. <laughs> we may not always feel that way. We feel locked into a job. You know, we have the family that we have, the same friends on Facebook, whatever it may be. All of them are chosen social interactions. They are not situations that you are ever forced to be in. You wake up in the morning and you decide every step of the way what you're going to do that day. You may feel internal pressure <laughs> to follow the path that you set up yesterday because that's the expectation. If you just don't go to work today, there are ramifications for that. So you have to follow that social acceptability, but don't ever let the, the outside voice, the people's vision or their version of what's going on in your world tell you how your world should be for you. This is something that my son brings to me all the time. Dad, I just, I dealt with this situation today. I'm surrounded by all these girls and all I hear is them talking about the dumbest things in the world. Like, you know, how much lip gloss they should be putting on and just stupid stuff but they're the most annoying part is they're talking like they're kindergartners and little children to each other and he's just like trying not to pull his hair out you know? <laughs> and and I have to have him go into these situations with a mindset of how he is able to make progress without getting frustrated by where he feels he's being forced to interact and the solution in this situation, and this may help you guys out as well, is if you ever go into an interaction, okay, there's, there's only two outcomes. You win some or you learn some, all right? I didn't make this up, but my version of this 
is you will, holy crap, it's really windy. You will get to make a choice in how you respond to whatever happens in a situation. So if you get pissed off and you get frustrated and you start yelling at these girls, hey, shut up, you guys are all stupid. Like that's a pretty far end extreme response. But now there's a whole chain reaction that goes along with it where you lost control of the situation and how things happen and those girls are all gonna attack you and whatever it may be, right? But if you sit back and you recognize the distaste that you have for the conversation or the activity or whatever it may be, and you look inside yourself and say, I don't wanna be that, okay? Any situation that's negative shows you the way you don't want to go. And this is super important in finding the way that you want to go, because it's really hard up front. My son is like, man, I just don't get these kids and blah, 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 and he's frustrated because he has to deal with it. And I said, look, be happy that you've already made that decision and the awareness that you don't want to be in that, that same mind frame of just screwing around all the time and just trying to get through the day and what can I get away with and how am I going to impress people? Your thought process is how am I moving forward? Well, you're learning every single time you deal with the situation you don't want to deal with, which direction you don't want to go in, which eventually you run out of options, you find the thing that you like to do. But there's so many things that we want to do in our world or that are possibilities to do that it's hard to make that choice and go with it. So we have to base it on the things that I didn't like this situation, so I'm gonna try this one. Oh, I didn't like that, I'm gonna try this one. And it's like, it's like a rocket ship, guys. There's an end destination in mind every time a rocket launches, like they're trying to go to the moon, for example. They, they blast off and they start flying into outer space and they have all this equipment that judges their trajectory and the global positioning and all kinds of crazy scientific stuff to determine whether or not they're going in the right direction. <laughs> it's very important that when you're on a, you know, 100 million mile course, a super long path, that you constantly reevaluate, am I going in the right direction? Am I going in the right direction? And guess what? A rocket ship to the moon is off course 97% of the time. There was only 3% of the time it's actually pointed in the right direction. The rest of it is adjusting course along the way based on an evaluation of whatever those factors are that tell you whether or not you're going in the right direction. Okay, so if you, sit, if you are in a situation that is uncomfortable or not something you want to continue to deal with, you get to choose how you respond, first of all, in the situation and how to avoid that situation in the next time and how to seek out more situations that play in your favor and that actually get you excited. What are you motivated to be involved with? Because that's what it really comes down to. If you're that skydiver and you're that adrenaline junkie, you need to find other people who are adrenaline junkies and hang out with them. Because that time that you jumped out and something changed and your chute didn't open correctly the first time and you were scared you were going down and going to die. And then, you know, before you hit that 10,000 foot mark, you finally were able to get it open and like this relief came over you, blah, blah, blah. That passion for your story will not hit the people who don't give a crap about the same things. But if you live around other skydivers, they may have had similar situations or an even crazier story to tell you back. And the passion, the motivation you have inside of you to, to share and engage with those people on the similar path is the thing that keeps you motivated in the world. So it's super important, guys. <laughs> if you can't answer the question about what are you excited to get up out of bed and do every day? Start with that. Find something to be excited about. Don't struggle through every day just tolerating and sacrificing to get done what you feel the outside world wants you to do. Life is about being happy and figuring out the things that drive you forward based on what you like to do in the moment, not the result that comes from it. 
All right, so appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, if you're watching this, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up on this. If this message was something that inspired you in any way or you feel that somebody else could benefit from, please share this. Help everybody else get that same benefit of just hearing the words sometimes that take you to a place where you need to think about it, reevaluate, and figure out how you can step forward in progress and not focus on that perfection. So appreciate you guys. We'll see everybody next time.